Hey, my name is Shunshan. I sell art on Shunshan.co. Today we're going to review the 355. So this is a film by Simon Kinberg. Time is two hours, two minutes. So right around a little bit longer than an hour and a half I like, but action films tend to go a little bit longer, so it's not like those crazy two and a half long hour movies. So a little longer than I like, but... There's a lot of characters here, so I think you need a little bit more time. Actors are Jason Fleming as Elijah Clark. Jessica Justine plays Mace. Diane Kruger plays Maria Schmidt. Penelope Cruz plays Graciela Rivera. Lupita Nyong'o plays Khadija Adeyemi. So there's this dangerous um, hacker weapon. Um, they're about ready to sell to these dangerous figures in the world, and then the Columbia police kind of raid them, and then this guy luckily finds this at the last second, doesn't know what he has, and he decides, oh, I'll sell for $3 million on the open market. So I think it's the CIA, they kind of swoop in and try to buy it, but then the deal goes wrong, and the CIA is fighting the BND from Germany <laughs> for possession of the thing, and then they lose it, and then they go, they capture it again, finally, with these three girls. They have to team up to capture it, they capture it. And then they get betrayed by one of the bosses in one of the spy groups. And so then they trace it to this huge auction and eventually they finally get a hold of the weapon, you know, before I mean, it's unleashed and destroys the world because you, with this weapon, you can literally take down airplanes or disrupt city grids at the flick of a switch, right? So kind of a really dangerous weapon. So I think it's a pretty fun film. It's unrealistic, of course, with you know, the women being like female fighter kind of thing. I like them as spies, so it's kind of like they play both roles. They have, on one side they can fight and, you know, fight these men head on, which is a little bit unrealistic, I think. But at the same time, they kind of use the traditional female spy things, which would be kind of alluring, seducing, flirting, poisoning. That's a really traditional female spy. So it's kind of, they're mixing up what a female spy would probably really do. You know, kind of be honeypot or behind the scenes unassuming spy and then the new modern age kind of spy where they kind of kick ass and so that's kind of fun you have a little bit of the traditional i don't know now nowadays a lot of films in hollywood have kind of they throw in a couple chinese actors and then <laughs> so they can sell into the chinese market right because the chinese market they, they only let i think it's 20 films a year and so the only way to get it into the chinese market which has like a billion a billion point three million people right <laughs> And you're not going to sell to all of them because eventually you hit the black market or they'll pull the film early. So you really don't hit that potential, right? You might get, but it's definitely like a couple million dollars at least, right, from these films. So they definitely have to pander. And so there's going to be a Chinese uh, spy. Is one of the spies is Chinese at the very end, kind of tacked in there. The final scene is in Shanghai. So the Chinese police can come to the rescue of everyone. Like everyone's incompetent except the Chinese police. They stomp in. Although, to be honest, if there was like a gunfight at any major city, even if it was spies, eventually this the police would find out and raid, right? So in a way, it's kind of realistic in the sense that, you know, the national police would raid in on these guys anyway. But that, that the fact that they come to the, you know, the rescue, it actually plays in the traditional Chinese propaganda film. <laughs> where you always have the evil Westerner bad guys, which is, this in this case, is Western bad guys, right? And the Chinese police and the Chinese spy save the day, right? So it's like, he's like... They're, they're blending in like a traditional Chinese propaganda film into a, a Hollywood film, which I guess they have to do nowadays, but then it's kind of like, I mean, it's it's kind of subtle, but I mean, if you think about it, just obviously Chinese propaganda film, right? The funny thing is, you know, the bad guys, these guys are hacking and they're going to destroy the world and they're stealing things. And that's exactly what the CCP does. <laughs> Like the CCP is like unleashed like COVID and destroyed half the world and has no qualms about stealing Western patents. So it's kind of like, you know, it's like the opposite of reality is played in the film. You know, it's definitely like 1984 doublespeak if you think about it. But getting back to the film outside of that, you know, slant to sell into the Chinese market. I was really surprised at kind of the rating on IMDb. I think it's 4.7 right now is when I rated it. And I was like, well, it's not that bad. I think it was kind of a fun movie, right? It's like, why would it be 4.7? <laughs> I mean, the guys that saw this probably thought it was trash. I don't know why it's rated that low, but I mean, it is unrealistic to have all these women kind of team up and fight off all the bad guys, but it's just a fun escapism. A lot of films are unrealistic. I mean, if you look at Jungle Cruise, that's unrealistic as hell too. So I don't know. <laughs> I mean, all these films are kind of unrealistic. I mean, if they're realistic, then it's a drama, right? Which is kind of, 
where you start with film, but it's always fun to have kind of an escapism, spy movie or adventure movie, action film, I don't know, murder film, mafia film. I mean, none of those are pretty realistic in a way, so it's just kind of fun. One of the first scenes, they have kind of this trade-off that goes bad, but it's not really clear why the trade-off goes bad. I mean, there's definitely the Germans and the CIA are after the same thing at the same time, so that's kind of, they kludge it up on each other, but it's not really clear why the first scene goes bad. I think maybe they filmed it or cut it differently than would have made more sense. Also, the weird part is, you know, uh, Mace's boyfriend is murdered, and then later it turns out he's not murdered, and you're like, what the hell is this, and why would the agency cover for him? So it's just like... That part a little bit doesn't make sense. I mean, it makes sense if it was small part of a smaller group, but in this case, they're both working for the CIA. So it's like, why would the CIA not know some of their spies are bad? But double agents or triple agents are definitely possible. I liked one of the final scenes. This is a spoiler alert. Is where the bad guys have all everyone rounded up and they're killing off friends and family of uh, the different female spies, right? So that's kind of a fun thing. It's like. How far do you ratchet up as far as killing just an acquaintance, then a friend, and then a family member, and then the kids and family? You're like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> so eventually, they're like, no, no, that's too much. You know, after they've killed like several family members <laughs> of the two female spies, you're like, dude, they just killed this guy, this girl's lover. And then, but you're gonna save this other girl's family? You're like, come on, man. <laughs> like, if you, you're not really worth it if you're just a boyfriend <laughs> until you put that ring on, man. You ain't worth it, dude. <laughs> Which is kind of. <laughs> If you think about it symbolically, right? Uh, the other thing that was kind of weird about the film, I think, was the bad guy that's, you know, he's in the first beginning of the film and obviously the end of the film. And he's after this hacker weapon, but it's not really clear what his motive is. Like, why does he want to destroy the world? Why does he want this hacking weapon? What's his motive? You got to have a motive in there to make sense. And it doesn't really, he's just this generic bad guy. So you got to have kind of a reason that makes sense to the audience for the bad guy. And there's not really put it together. He's just this evil villain kind of a guy, which is... You got to have a reason why, what he's trying to do, why he's the bad guy, why he wants, there has to be some motive that makes sense to the audience. They don't have to be, agree with him, but it has to make sense. And there's not really a clear motive of why this guy wants this weapon. So that was a little bit of weakness in the story, I would say. The, ha the hacker weapon itself is kind of unlikely. It's like this little chip that fits on pack of a phone and then you can hack anything in the world, airplane systems, dark web stuff, and you just instantly hack into it as like, like, really? Come on, guys. You need, like, a supercomputer or something like that, right? If you had a supercomputer and you had, a, like, advanced programming and a team of guys, you could totally hack into anything. But you need, like, a team of agents, right? So it's kind of, like, it flips it on the head. I mean, it needs it to be, to work, to work as a plot device. Like, you have to have a small enough device that fits in your hand that you can steal. And then it goes back and forth through the whole story, right? So if it was a supercomputer, there'd be no way to steal it, per se. <laughs> You could steal it, but then it's like, if you don't steal it quietly and slowly, then it wouldn't make any sense, right? So you definitely have to have kind of an iPhone to make it work in a movie. But in, in reality, I don't think that makes any sense in the world, but it's just a kind of a fun spy movie. Um, there's a lot of fun chase scenes, obviously, with an action spy film. So some of those scenes are shot very similar to Jason Bourne with a little bit of shaky cam, close-up shots, not very, you know, not that, you know, two, three person in a shot, just like really close up, you know, overly close-ups of higher tension you don't know what's going on disorienting and i think you know a lot of the spy movies have kind of copied born identity for that and this copies borrow some of that not completely but it definitely has a touch of jason born identity where they shot it but it's appropriate to the genre i think i think there's a little bit of challenge as, as well with the women playing the superheroes i like it it's fun concept but you know your traditional guy that wants to go see guys beat up guys like in a boxing match or two guys like a J Jason Bourne identity. It's more realistic in the sense that it'd be two guys fighting it out and it'd be like women would just be kind of the support crew it makes more sense in the traditional roles. I mean, it's kind of fun to have this concept, but then it's kind of like, who do the guys root for? The guys want to see some guys beating up guys. So if it's girls beating up girls, I mean, it's kind of fun, but then it's like, you don't have anyone to root for, you know, it's kind of in a way. So, cause there's no damsel in distress, right? There is one damsel in distress, so that's kind of fun. Like, one of the characters is kind of a damsel in distress, and the rest are kind of these tough, badass women. So that's kind of fun, I think, of the contrast. But I think also for women, they want to go to see a film and see bad guys as well. And then, like, the classic example is James Bond, where you have this smooth talking. He's a badass, but then he kind of seduces women. And there's no guys like these. These are all kind of simps. But <laughs> backup support team for the women, you know? <laughs> like, they can't do anything on their own. So you're just like... Except for the bad guys. They're definitely... This is a rough traditional bad guys so it's kind of in a way if you think about it it's kind of like toxic feminism in a way 
<laughs> of like all the guys are bad. You know, the, all, the only really alpha males are the bad guys and the beta males are the ones that are the good guys. <laughs> all the simps are the good guys. <laughs> the support team, right? <laughs> but the guys, the only guys with like toxic, toxic masculinity are the bad guys. <laughs> so it's kind of like, it, it's kind of like you look at it, it's kind of like feminism, you know, like making fun of, you know, the traditional male roles in a way. But yeah, I think it's a fun film. I'm not sure why it's rated so badly on IMDb. I think it's fun. Um, I think it was shot well, pretty decent storyline. Obviously, you have to, you know, swallow a couple things like women can beat up guys and, you know, things like that. But I don't see that's too bad. I mean, if you got the Jungle Cruise, I mean, they go over the falls and there's plenty of unbelievable scenes in that or even say a Tom Cruise movie. I mean, that's completely unrealistic as well. So, <laughs> but who knows, you know, this is kind of weird. Some of these films, they hit really well. Like I think Atomic Blonde, I really like that one really well. Anna was pretty fun. So, you know, some of the spy films with women, it works really well and some of them are flops. So it's just, it's kind of like a give or take. We'll see how this one lands. I, I liked it. I think it's pretty good. It's fun to watch. So I recommend it. Um, I don't know if I collect it, but it's definitely, definitely watchable once, twice, maybe three times. Uh, if you like to subscribe, you can subscribe below. And I'll see you in the next movie review. Thanks for watching, guys.